an omnibus word familiar to us all that summarizes those loving ties to our Heavenly Father is the word religion. Scholars debate the etymology of that word, just as scholars and laymen alike debate almost everything about the subject of religion. But a widely accepted account of its origin suggests that our English word religion comes from the Latin word relegare, meaning to tie, or more literally, to retie. In that root syllable of ligare, you can hear the echo of a word like ligature, which is what a doctor uses to sew us up if we have a wound. So for our purpose today, religion is that which unites what was separated or holds together what might have been torn apart. This is an obvious need for us, individually and collectively, given the trials and tribulations we all experience here in mortality. Of course, there's often a counterclaim that while some in the contemporary world may be less committed to religion per se, nevertheless, many can consider themselves still spiritual. But frankly, that palliative may not offer much in terms of collective moral influence in society if spirituality, in quotation marks, means gazing at the stars or med meditating on a mountaintop. Indeed, many of our ancestors in generations past lived, breathed, walked, talked in a world full of spirituality, but that clearly included concern for the state of one's soul, an attempt to live a righteous life, some form of church attendance and participation in that congregation's charitable service in the community. Yes, in more modern times, individuals certainly can be spiritual in isolation, but we don't live in isolation. We live as families and friends and neighbors and nations. That calls for ties, ties that bind us together and that bind us to the good. Call it secularism or modernity or the technological age or existentialism on steroids, whatever you want to call it. Such an approach to life, whatever it is, we know something about it. Most importantly, we know that it cannot answer the yearning questions of the soul nor is it substantial enough to sustain us in times of moral crisis. Rabbi Lord Jonathan Sachs, formerly chief rabbi of the United Hebrew Congregations of the British Commonwealth for 22 years, a man whom I admire, admire very, very much, has written, what the secularists forget is that homo sapiens are meaning-seeking people. And if there is one thing the great institutions of modern world do not provide, it is that they do not provide meaning. It has been principally the world's great faiths, religion, those ligatures to the divine we are speaking of. That's the group that has done that. They provide and speak to the collective good of society. They offer us a code of conduct and a moral compass for living. They help us exult in profound human love and strengthen us against profound human loss. If we lose consideration of these deeper elements of our mortal existence, divine elements, if you will, we lose much, some would say we lose most, of that which has value in life, the indisputable power of faith, the most powerful and enduring force in human history, the influence for good in the world, the link between the highest in us and our highest hopes for others. That is why religion matters. 
Voices of religious faith have elevated our vision, deepened our human conversation, strengthened our, both our personal and collective aspiration since time began. How do we even begin to speak of what Abraham and Moses, David and Isaiah, Jeremiah, Nephi, Mormon and Moroni have given us? Or of what Peter, James, and John, or the Apostle Paul, or Joseph Smith, or Thomas Monson mean to us? This BYU devotional address with Elder Jeffrey R. Holland was given on August 16, 2016.